All right, guys. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Just want to check that everybody can hear me before we begin and uh, get this on the road. We only have about 45 minutes or so, so I don't want to waste any time. Can everybody in the room hear me? I know we'll get a few extra people coming through uh, as we go, uh, and that's perfectly fine. But we're all here. Yeah, perfect. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, good, good to see you all. Great to have you here, and uh, thanks for joining us. Today is June 23rd, 2020. Sam Evans with you here. Um, I think third or fourth of my webinars now with FX Street. And uh, good to be here with you guys. So last couple of sessions, we did some teaching. I thought for this session on here, let's just go over to the markets, share kind of a little bit of the way I like to look at the markets uh, and see if you guys can take a little bit from that. As many of you will know, um, I was a co-developer in OTA, of course, strategy many, many years ago. And uh, so you'll be very familiar if you've ever looked at any of the webinars presented by any of the team over there with the concepts of supply and demand. So I will be touching a little bit on that as well. Uh, and at the end of it, I'll give you a little bit of an idea of obviously what you can do to carry on following me. I'm going to be very busy over the coming months um, launching my own education company. I've got very, very close to launch. Everything's going real well with that as well. So um, I'll show you how you can kind of reach out and get on the email list if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about what we do as well. So uh, what I'm going to be doing on here is I'm going to be getting through as many of the major pairs as I possibly can. Uh, I, with FX, um, I do two things in my trading. I basically work on a couple of ways. I actually personally am more of a swing and position trader uh, on this uh, in the world of Forex, and I'm an active day trader uh, in the world of futures. I've found that that's always been you know, the best way for me. Um, I've, I like the movement. One of the reasons why, and again, I know this is Forex and we're focusing a lot on Forex here, guys. But one of the reasons why I like to focus on, on FX is I find because of the 24 hour nature of it, it means, lends itself very, very well to the longer term style of trading, the more hands off approach as well. Whereas the frantic nature of stock index futures, you get a lot of up, up a lot of downs, a lot of sideways markets, which if you're disciplined, you can create some very good. opportunities and capitalize on those opportunities in the world of futures so a lot of people I mean I've I, I, I had a few mentioned why do you why do you mainly do you know, you know swing trading on the forex well an idea as well uh, I think if end of a selection process and great question you know from my GGO, what pairs are we going to trade I want to see what opportunity there is there So what I've got is four charts. I'm not going to have any more than these four charts up on the screen right now. And hopefully everybody's seeing this all okay. And uh, you should be seeing my just four charts. I've got on here GBP, USD, and Euro. I apologize if I go quite quickly during this session. Again, I, so I want to make sure I can cover as much as I possibly can. Um, so you'll see on here monthly and daily. In four hour, four hour. What is typically a about the smallest time? Frame up. I go to. No. Okay. And one of the things I'm always looking at firstly is like, where are we? You know, are we in an optimum place? Tell me that. The next thing I'm going to help me with this level right now so you know, where there's a lot of that triggers me and, and by the way a little tip for you time frames all the time the reason i stick to the same time frame is because i know reset the charts and i know what i'm looking for now in this area here that i've got i've got a zone right now that the price is at at the moment here about 133.38 to 113 uh 113 38 to 113.53 now, this area is interesting to me. First, I'm looking at it saying, well, I'm hitting into a major area of supply, resistance, whatever you want 
want to call it a retail zone right now. What I got about this at the moment here is from this high downward move that actually goes as well. So the first, now this looks like it, a trigger price was around 138 on here. The high was 133.79. So it's not quite triggered in this particular area here. But this area here, we got a few pips higher. I'd be looking at particular zone. You understand, guys? So I'll always have two steps. Information, if you like, or a really good level to come in, okay, for somebody to, to make me interested in this. So let's go take a look at the daily chart. Now, on the daily chart, let's blow this up and see what's been going on. And look, just look at the indecisiveness, right? We had the sell-off during coronavirus. We made a massive recovery. And now we're just kind of in the chop. We're not at extreme highs. We're not at extreme lows. In fact, you know, some of you guys, uh, OTA followers will know, you know, there's a great level, you know, just down at this area here that almost triggered with a good strong move away. But I look at this chart right now, and the only thing from a swing trading perspective that I would be interested in is this upper region here. And this lower region for me is a little bit tight. You know, not the cleanest area in the world. So what could we do in this example? What I really like is just under here, there's a really narrow area here with a powerful explosive move. And what I love about this lower area at 2189 to 2159 is the price hasn't come back to that area yet, which is pretty awesome. Okay, it hasn't come back to that area yet. And this one here, the price has not come back to this area yet. So what we've got are two untested areas. You, you might have heard people talk about fresh zones and stuff like that and valid zones. I look at it like this. If a zone has been untested, great. It doesn't mean, by the way, if a zone has been tested or tried before, it's not going to work. Some of the best trades I've ever had are areas that have got tested multiple times, you know, where the big boys have really loaded the boat on those particular trades. But, you know, the first thing I'm seeing on here is, you know, this is an indecisive market, right? So, you know, I'm not really interested. This is where people get chopped to pieces, guys. You know, look at the chart. It's indecisive. You know, people got to reprice action more. There's not really a lot on this trade right now. So here's the thing. Very simple. If I took a short up at an area like this, if I'm short up here, and if I'm long the pair down here, right, then I've got to be patient and wait. And the, the nature of this business is very, very simple. We can set those orders up and we can wait, right? What we want to then do is say, look, well, let's go halfway between this area and this halfway point, let's call it around 2462, would be an ideal halfway point for us to take profit on either of these trades or have a target, right? So if I got short, this would be a good first target for me. If I got long, this would be a good first target. Now, I like the long a little bit more because the long's got a little bit of a tighter zone on it. Okay, I like that. The higher zone, a little bit of wider zone. Now, look, this is a big mistake that a lot of people make as well. Okay, they say, well, the size of that zone there, that means that first target is only going to be about three to one. I'm like, right. And they're like, well, and I'm like, listen, if you try and get your zones and your areas, and your entries too tight with super tight stop losses, do you know what's going to happen to you most of the time? You're going to just keep getting stopped out over and over and over again. You've got to give your trade enough room to work as well as a rough room to not work. Does everybody understand that? You know? You know, it is all about giving your trades room to work, but also enough room to kind of to, to, to fail, right? This is why I think people get too cheap on their stop losses. You go into the Forex market and you continually try to use a 10 pip stop all the, all the time, you could get stopped out five, six times in a row and you're down 60 pips when you could have risked just 40 on one trade and it worked. You know, this is another key aspect, another key thing that a lot of people overlook. Now, one little technique for you, I could take this chart down to a smaller time frame and maybe hone in my entries a little bit. And I'll show you how I do that. So I could go to here and say, all right, well, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this down to, let's say, a let's go to a six hour time frame. You see that, guys? So I'll, I'll have to just go with a thicker brush. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Right. So here's the thing. Obviously, a trend, when it's trending, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high. Now, the higher and higher it's going, you want to get into it, right? Obviously, we had to take out highs here, here here and here right but it's always going to be better not to buy it there because there's a high probability to after the trends move it's going to pull back right so what we want to ideally look for is where is it going to pull back to the entry i want is something like that right or let it put in the high 
and then take the breakout, right? That's another thing. You know, people think the breakouts are bad. No, let it put in a high and then take it as it breaks through the high, right? Let it put in a high, take it as it breaks through the high. That's another way we could do it, right? But always what we've got to understand and think is what is above us? What is above us? And like, if you go back over to our charts here, you see the problem I've got right now on a breakout like this is if I broke out here, I'm running right into an area where I've got major selling pressure. Look at what the chart did from this area. Sold hard. Sold hard. Right? So, you know, this is all about understanding, you know, the value, the current market value on here. So what I've got right now on this particular chart is, is here. I've got my sell zone. I've got an aggressive play on here. Let's go ahead and mark that off. If we go back over to the daily charts for a sec. Go back over to those daily charts. see it right here so i'm going to just call this an aggressive short now one of the things i like about it is i can see that strong move away there's not really any and it's untested it's a first time back to that area as well think about that first time back to the area is always going to be a stronger area for us as well so the aggressive short target with this on this would be around 123.89 if we get to the higher areas then i'm going to be looking for a target a little bit lower on this okay target number one around 24.73 target number two on here as well so again you know you've got to make a decision we may be in the middle of the price action right now but at the moment we have been trending down for a couple of days let's go with that momentum it's very clear to us always play the probability on our side as well no matter what anyone tells you trend does matter you know major turning points create the trend we've got to respect the trend as well all making sense to everybody guys okay so again i've got an aggressive short conservative short conservative long all right got um hey give me another major first one here let's take another look on this one all right let's go look at another miss Let's go take a look at, actually, you know, what's a really interesting market right, right now is the Aussie dollar. The Aussie. And this Aussie, right? This is good. This one has stumped a whole lot of people lately. Everyone was is down, we're trend down, trend down. We're trying, go look at it on a weekly chart. Okay? Look at that weekly chart, right? We were in a downward trend forth from 2018. To like a two-year downward trend. Everyone looks at the trend. Everyone looks at the trend. But where was the best time to join that downward trend? Always the retracement, right? The best time to join a trend was the retracement. Take a look. Here, 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 right? Even here again, we've had it. It's always better to sell after the rally. Always the better to buy after the drop, right? This is why I'm like a broken record. All my students in online trade call me the broken record. I like to say the same thing over and over again. Yeah, I do because I found that the very best traders who taught me used to just tell me the same thing over and over and over again. Drill it in, drill it in, drill it in. It's like muscle memory, right? Very, very, very important, right? So again, what caused this strong change in the sentiment in the price, right? Why something after all this? How many people do you think got hammered way down here, got hammered down here trying to sell into this. And again, look at the clue. Look at the strong move like a rover and the pop. Well, here's the thing that most people are unaware of. A chart is a chart is a chart. I don't care what time frame you look at. You say we buy low here. Someone says, but you are am buying. The state market. Let's just imagine average home sells for $600,000, right? Let's say where you live right now for $600,000. And you drive by $100,000. This house is two feet away. I go and buy that house and flip it. It was the same size, same square footage, right? It's historical. It's like gas prices. If you're driving home today and gas prices drop to 50 cents a gallon, guess what you're going to do? You're going to buy gas, right? It's the same thing. This market's come down here. And, you know, the big players have said, well, man, last time Aussie was down here in 2003, this thing was a bargain. Let's snap it up. It's like oil, guys. Oil. What's oil prices right now? Oil's $41 right now. Back in April, oil was 10 less than $10 a barrel. And everyone's like, oh, it's going to zero. It's like, if you had $10 in your back pocket right now, think about this. If you had $10 in your back pocket right now, 
and oil was ten dollars a barrel what do you think is going to serve you better in the world of this is the way it looks this is why the buy low sell high mentality is so powerful and works so well because the institutions the big market players look at this like a business the amateur investor doesn't they focus on what they think is going to happen next rather than anticipating what happened in the past to give them the probability of what they do next right so it's the same thing. Now everyone's, oh, the Aussie's back. Well, great. But here's the thing. There's probably still going to be people out there right now who believe the Australian dollar should be lower. And these are the people who are jumping in right here around 69.25 to 71.06. These people here, we've got to deal with these guys, right? And the last time price was here, what happened? We had a massive drop in price, okay? So is now a good time to buy the Australian dollar? No, it's not a good time to buy it. In fact, it's the worst possible time to buy it because we've already had that move in price. Now, we have not had any other selling coming in on this chart since that time. So let's go take a now look at the weekly and see. And we've got pressure. Now, for me, the best time to be a buyer would be this, to join this new belief in the Aussie, would be to be buy on a pullback if the price comes back down to this 66 area, right? But it's not there now. So that tells me, all right, the best thing you can do if you really want to trade right now is you've got to look at the market and you've got to see what it's telling you. And right now, what is it telling me? Okay, we have got major supply here that has been tested and respected, right? And let's just see at the moment here. Now, we haven't, we've hit this area once. I don't like taking the area necessarily again, but I could take it again, take a short at 7036 and ride it down for my optimum area to buy. And my optimum area to buy would be down here at 66.43. Look at what the big players win. Now look, every time this market has produced new major lows, it's pulled back, rallied, pulled back, rallied, pulled back, rallied. But there's no major buying activity until the 66.43 area. So if, the, if it comes down to that area, bang, then I'll buy it. Which means therefore looking at the chart as we are right now, just being objective not overthinking it, you know, not trying to have too much of an opinion. Like, this is the thing, right? Let me tell you this right now. You'll notice about me. I'll always put it myself on the line. I'll always make a call. I'll never get on a webinar and go, oh, you could have done this. You could have done that. Yeah, whatever, right? We all coulda, woulda, shoulda. I'll say, look, that's where I'll buy it. And if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. If that's where I'll sell it. I can't stand that when people tell you what you could do. Yeah, we could do anything. We could sit on our hands. We could click on. Look, why do I go at it like this? I go at it like this because I just read what I'm seeing on the chart. And what I'm seeing on the chart right now here at 7036 is a selling area. Now, I don't think it's the greatest selling area. It was great here. We had a good move away. Look at the strong drop away. But we're coming back again. But I also know this is a big area. And when you've got a big area like this, it could be tested a few times. So with that in mind, we've got two choices. For the short, we could get short and take it again at 7036, get those stop above 7082. I, being so close to 0.71, would get my stop above 0.71. That's what I would do to be safe, you know, give myself a little bit of room. There's probably got a lot of people hunting stops up at that particular price, right? That's the first thing, okay, to, to take into account. Otherwise, let's drill it down to a smaller chart. Let's go over to our... Six hour chart and take a look at what it says on there, right? Okay, look, not really telling me anything else. Got the same area again. Let's drill it down a little bit further and see. Let's go to the four hour chart. Now, what I don't like is the size of this wick. You know, you are in a zone right now. Look, you could ask yourself a question on this. Hey, Sam, could I go short at this area here? Heck, you could do what you want. The only thing I don't like about this area here is it didn't go on to make a new low. You know, it didn't go on to make a new low. So I would be more interested in getting into the price action a little bit higher. Now, if you got short here, you got a tight stop in, great. Or wait for a confirmation. Wait for the price to leave this area, then go short and try and run it all the way down. Target one at 68, target number two at 66, 66, right? But the only thing about this area that I'm not as crazy about is we've already had a touch to it here and we did not make a brand new low this region here i like because we did make a brand new low now let's go and keep drilling this down and see what it looks like on the smaller time frames and again you know one of the things we've got to see on this whole area is now this is interesting this would be a little bit cleaner for me on the one hour chart right here 
there was a little tiny gap here. It's a round number of 0.7. That, for me, is the area that really produced the low. So rather than take this area again, me, my aggressive short would be at 69.95, right in this area here where we see this drop, a little bit of basing, and then bam, look how we went on and made brand new lows from that area. That would be the ideal area for me to be getting on that particular short. And then and if not, there's really, you know, let's look at the size of this zone that we've got on the weekly. You know, guys, on this weekly chart, we've got all the way up to around 71.06 to play with this. So if this area here doesn't hold again, then we're probably going to go high. But for now, I'm going to look at the shorts. I'm going to lean on it. Think about our location. I'm high up. OK, I'm going to I'm high up on this. OK, I'm high up on these particular areas. You know, this is what is beautiful about these things. High up on these areas. Target number one, 6850. Target number two on this will be around 6648. And then if price comes back to this area, that's where I'd be jumping in the price action on there as well. And again, you know, I'm, it's all about it's a game of chess. This is all this is. It's a game of chess, thinking about the moves all the time, ahead at a time, where they go and where they go and where they're going. Hey, Marie, you'll have to have Ask FX Street for that. I believe this was originally a premium webinar, and then I was told that it was opened up and it was uh, open to everybody. So I don't know what the deal is with it all. Um, but don't worry, I'll make sure if you enjoyed what you're going through here, uh, I'll keep you posted on how to keep in touch of where I am and what I do. OK, so this is basically, uh, you know, how we're looking at this all right so again always thinking about location 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 all right guys man i can't believe how quickly this all goes it's already 10 42 i've only got a few more minutes on this as well uh that i'm that i'm going through on this you know but again you know what can we take away from this you know and and again i'm look one of these to remember is here you know you guys don't get to work with me regularly i'm trying to explain a bit of my methodology you know when i do my live trading rooms and so on everybody's already been taught the methodology so they know i don't have to explain why i'm doing something so much i can just go through the trades put the trades out there and everybody understands you know why i'm doing that i know it can be a little bit harder when you know it's only once a month on stuff as well um but you know at the end of the day guys i always want you to just you know Take what you can from these, look at different perspectives as well. And one of the biggest tips I can give all of you is just don't overthink it. You know, absolutely just don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. This is it. There you go. There's a recording of it. FX Street Admin just posted that as well on there for you, Marie, as well. OK, there is a recording, Paul. No worries at all. You know, so look, I like to do a little bit of live market analysis while I'm teaching at the same time. You can get a lot done in 45 minutes if you really kind of put your mind to it and you speak quickly like I do as well. But, you know, guys, you know, hopefully you found that a little bit useful as well. Let's see how this euro dollar plays out for us. Remember, trade days are nice low risk short. We've got our targets. Trade area here, B, we haven't got an entry. We're going to have to wait for an entry for that particular one on there. OK, we just have to wait for an entry on that particular one if we're going to do that. All right. Listen, um, very exciting news for me as well. If you just give me a couple of minutes before everybody leaves as well, um, I'll just share this with you too. So you can see, here's how you can reach me, okay? Best place to reach me right now is on at Sam Evans Trader, at Sam Evans Trader, my Twitter page. If I just go over to this for just a second and I, and I, and I show you on the Twitter page, I'm very active on the Twitter page, okay? Doing a whole lot of, uh, a lot of things on this. So let's just go to the home. Uh, I like to post a lot of the trades that I do. A lot of my students kind of like to see what I'm up to on here and what I'm doing as well. So I post a lot of the trades that I do on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, just show you how I look. I trade the Russell futures most days. Okay, that's my go-to. Forex options, the lot of it. So this is a good place for you to do. And what I would say to you as well, guys, if you've got any question for me, just go and do a direct message to me. At Sam Evans Trader is my handle on there. That is the place uh, to get me uh, on that. And my company, my company launch is actually going to be happening in the next two weeks. So what I've actually been doing is if you're interested in getting on our mailing list, hearing a little bit about our, we're doing a very special kind of closed door launch on this that we're going to be talking about as well. If you want to hear more about that, please just direct message me on Twitter and send me your email address. And with your permission, I will get you on the list and you can find out a little bit about what we're going to be doing uh, with my company, which is like launching in, in the next just under a couple of weeks as well. Very excited about it. Uh, we're going about everything very, very differently the way we're doing it. I've managed to find and 
team up with some very great people I've brought in on this and it should be a, a great thing as well. So I hope to, even if you just want to find out a little bit about what we do, our podcast, our radio show, our daily market minutes that we're going to be putting out there. Great thing to do. Just send me a direct message on at Sam Evans, at Sam Evans trader via Twitter, and I will get you on the mailing list and confirm that as well. And everybody messages me, got an overwhelming response last week. I, I make sure I message everybody back just to confirm that I've got that as well. So uh, awesome. No doubt I'll be back here next month with FX street as well guys thank you so much for giving me your time i know time is a precious thing i hope you didn't find it wasted guys take care of yourself have a great week as well and i'll look out for your messages at sam evans trader is the place to find me thank you so much everybody take care